Hi again, Chrissy here at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Thanks for being here. I have several videos on my channel like this where I set up stations or invitations to learn. I've shared in the past how I'm against laying out a table spread of learning every day. I know this works well for a lot of families and that's wonderful, but it doesn't for us. I don't plan out everything for my kids. I've said it before that the beauty of homeschooling is that we don't need to fit in anyone's boxes or molds. As such, I don't expect my children to conform to a rhythm solely created by me. I spoke about it more in a homeschooling rhythm video. I'll link it for you. However, I do set up these invitations about once a month to break up the regular and the kids enjoy the surprise. I've set up a reading journal station here for Bella and Noah. Today will be the first journal entry, so first they'll be working on decorating a cover. While they doodle, I'll turn on some worship music. We went with this primary journal because they still need these bigger lines for handwriting. Once they've decorated their cover, they'll read for 20 minutes. Noah is finishing up the Luke and Lily of the Lighthouse set by The Good and the Beautiful. He's on to the second book, Lily's Pumpkins. And Bella is reading a Magic Tree House book, Dolphins at Daybreak number nine. After reading, they'll move on to their first entry. This is what we're using for journal entry prompts. The reading response journal by Simply Creative Teaching on Teachers Pay Teachers. Of course, I'll link it in the description box for you. I printed a few months worth of prompts to show you today. So there are menus for each month or she also has optional menu choices without the monthly label to just use any month as you'd like. The student chooses from the menu and there is a corresponding graphics page uh, to go with it. I printed it at 85% so that they could just cut and paste it into their journal. The options for this month's menu are noun notes. It says, as you read, find as many nouns as possible and record them. There's also a letter to the author. And this is why I chose a primary notebook. My kids struggle with the lack of writing space and size in worksheets. The next prompt says, create a new cover for the book they're reading. Create a web to describe the main idea of the book as you read your book. Jot down five questions you may have, and if you find the answers, jot them down too. There's also beginning, middle, and end. After reading your story, write what happened in the beginning, middle, and end. I've flipped through most of the months and I haven't found a menu choice that is repeated. I wouldn't mind that because we are fans of repetition here, but I do also appreciate the variety and new prompts to keep my readers engaged. And because we'll likely use this more than once a week, we have several options to pick from other menus. Other skills included in this set are problem uh, slash solution, text features, fiction or nonfiction, vocabulary, compare and contrast, author's purpose, summarizing, new beginning, new ending, predicting, favorite part, informational posters, that'll be fun, contradictions, verb tenses, adjectives, common and proper nouns. This is just a marvelous resource for language arts. It has grammar, writing, handwriting, reading comprehension, and it motivates and engages young readers. Once Bella and Noah have received instruction and they're all set up to finish their journal entries independently, I'm going to work one-on-one -on -one and pour it into my Luna Girls cup. So I've set up a few stations for my Luna over here. Let's start on this side. We've been reading all about fungi. So I created this pre slash early reading mushroom packet and I'll encourage her to complete two sheets today. So she'll work on tracing, handwriting, and together we'll discuss vowel and consonants in the word mushroom, vowels in blue, and consonants in red. And the second worksheet is to practice phonetic sound and more tracing. I've provided her with these mini mushroom manipulatives so that she can trace the letter for a little bit of fine motor practice. And then she'll rainbow trace, which just means that she'll trace it several times with different colors. I've provided the marker basket for her to choose. Then I'll invite her over to cuddle on my chair while we read the storybook, Maybe. I love this book. There are words that everyone needs to be spoken over their hearts and into their minds, and the illustrations tie in perfectly with Mushroom. We'll move to the table for more phonetic sound work. This is known as a phonetic sound basket or more like a bowl. I've provided a combination of small objects which begin with the 
mm, sound, and some which do not. So we'll go over each one together, emphasizing on the beginning sound and sort. And then we'll flip our chalkboard over and for more pre-reading we're utilizing this vintage resource i found a stack of these for different subjects at the library used book sale for about 10 cents each and i thought they'd be perfect for luna's uh, second year of kindergarten i have a video for the choices we've decided for her second kindergarten year including these books and i'll link that video too so I'm introducing simple letter blends. I don't expect her to master these now, just exposing her to the concept uh, so that she becomes familiar to this while I'm reading out loud to her and she's following along. Today we're learning A-I-L. For a hands-on and tactile experience, we'll continue with our Montessori movable alphabet to practice words with these blends. So first we'll practice A-I-L several times and together we'll come up with words. Luna is really good at this game and enjoys coming up with the words. I'll show her how these words are spelled. And Luna will finish up with some independent scissor practice and I've created these cutting strips for her. I've utilized the living room area to set up two more stations. The Luke and Lily of the Lighthouse set that Noah is reading incorporates the literacy principle of compound words and goes along with this Luke and Lily of the Lighthouse compound word memory card game. So Noah and I will play a few rounds of this together. Bella and I used to play this and she loved it to learn this principle of compound words. There are two sets to play, red and blue cards, and I also love that they're self-correcting for a beginner as the lighthouse images need to match to make the fit of the compound word. This year, Bella's goal is to become a writer, so she and I are working on sentence diagramming today. This helps a student to identify and create logical connections between different parts of a speech. So I've set out a dry erase board. I'm going to first teach and model the lesson and then dictate sentences for her to diagram. This could be done with sentences out of a reader or picture book or just made up complete sentences with an article, subject, so the noun, adjective, action verb, and adverb. I'm using the Good and the Beautiful Level 3 as a guide for myself on the concepts uh, Bella should cover this year. The new levels of the Good and the Beautiful 3 and 4 haven't been released yet, so for now we're using Level 3, which is equivalent to the fourth grade. One of the most common questions I get is what curriculum do you use? And it's always so hard to answer with a straightforward answer because we don't use the curriculum. But worksheet for worksheet, I'm using it as a teacher's guide for myself. I tend to gravitate towards teacher guides uh, for myself so that I can make sure that I'm covering uh, concepts or skill sets needed more or less for the age or equivalent grade of my children. And so today I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to showcase exactly how we don't use curriculum but we do all the same if that makes any sense. As I mentioned, we're learning all about fungi this season. Yesterday, Bella and I read through this page, An Introduction to Fungi. In it, we found many words that are new to us and we're all about words. And so today, she'll be working on vocabulary. Utilizing the same book, I prompted her to pick five words from yesterday's reading and reference to the glossary towards the back of the book. She'll be utilizing her main lesson book to write down the word and its definition. I love vocabulary work and I try to implement it as much as I can into our main lessons, not only because we love words, but because through this work she's also practicing so many concepts. Uh, it's handwriting uh, through copy work, um, she's practicing parts of speech through learning you know, if the word is a noun or an adjective or a verb in its definition, and also spelling. All right, everyone, that's it for today. I hope that you were able to gather some ideas from this video. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Check the description box. I will link uh, several other videos that I've done like this in the past. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you for your love.